The jury today heads into two days of deliberations uh, in the manslaughter trial of former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter. In April, Potter fatally shot Dante Wright during a traffic stop when she says that she accidentally grabbed her gun instead of her taser. Prosecutors and the defense making their closing arguments yesterday. Take a listen. This was a colossal screw up. A blunder of epic proportions. She thought, and I don't think there's anybody here, even the state, would contest the fact she thought she had a taser. To give us some guidance and some insight as to what the jury might be weighing right now, we're joined by criminal defense attorney Bernarda Villalona. Thank you so much for being with us uh, today. Obviously, Monday's closing arguments were very impassioned, both sides expressing the character of Wright and Potter, respectively. At one point, I believe the prosecutor said something to the effect of, you can be a nice person, but you still have to abide by the law. Uh, what is it that jurors are going to be moved the, the most by? The law on paper as it stands or the emotion behind this case? So the jury instructions, how it's given to the jury, the jury is not to take any emotion or sympathy. It should play no part in their deliberation. So that's what the judge tells them. And they have the jury instructions with them back in the room where they're deliberating. Unfortunately, we're all human. So we do take sympathy into account. But what the jury has to remember, this is the case of the state of Minnesota versus Kimberly Potter. Dante Wright is not on trial. They need to focus on the facts and apply the facts to the law as it's given to them. Well, in order for the jury to convict Potter of manslaughter, prosecutors actually have to prove she acted recklessly, right? Because obviously, in many cases like this, uh, police officers have used the defense that they were protecting their partner, that the uh, person who was considered a suspect resisted arrest, as was the case of Dante Wright. Uh, but uh, there really has to be this case of her causing an unreasonable risk, that she consciously uh, took a chance of causing death or great bodily harm. Do you believe that they've made that kind of a case? I believe the prosecution has proven that case beyond a reasonable doubt, at the very least, as to manslaughter in the second degree, as to culpable negligence. The reality is how the prosecution presented the case. They took it back to basics. Kimberly Potter was a police officer for 26 years, longer as a police officer than Dante Wright at life. And during those 26 years, for each of those years, she certified herself in terms of carrying that firearm on the right side and for 19 years carrying that taser on the left-hand side. And she took training each and every year about that. She was reckless and negligent from the very beginning at the point that she took her firearm out instead of her taser. Her taser would have required her left hand since it was a left hand straight draw as opposed to reaching with the right hand where she reached for her firearm. So that is how the, the prosecution has proven a case beyond a reasonable doubt is focusing on the very basics, which is the training. The training, the training, the training. And that's why since she knew she could get it deadly wrong, she failed to check to see if she got it right when she took out that firearm. Well, jurors actually interrupted deliberations uh, on Monday asking the judge about Potter's interview with Dr. Lawrence Miller, a psychologist who served as a defense witness. What do you think the jury was trying to figure out? So in regards to Dr. Lawrence Miller, just remember, if you find that Dr. Lawrence Miller looks familiar, remember Dr. Lawrence Miller actually testified in the case of the officer Van Dyke, who was charged with shooting Laquan Miller 16 times. So the one thing about Miller is that, remember, Miller, during cross-examination, the prosecutor many times cross-examined Miller about statements that were made by Officer Potter that did not fall into account with how Officer Potter testified. Because when she testified, she said about things that she didn't remember or she didn't know. However, she was able to make those statements to Dr. Miller. In the end, Dr. Miller was not able to draw a conclusion to say that Kimberly Potter at the time when she threw her firearm that she was suffering from weapons confusion. So he wasn't able to give a medical determination as to that, and the jury does not know that. Criminal Defense Attorney Bernarda Villanola, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.